Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we have a project that we're going to show you today. It's uh, actually an aluminum intake manifold. It's got uh, two four-barrel carburetors on it. It's pretty oxided material, but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll take this in the shop, and I'll show you the repairs that we need to make. So we're going to do a TIG repair on them. So come and join me. Okay, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Larry Barnes for offering this to us for repair. It's, it's a real-life part, and you can see it's got uh, two four-barrel carburetors on it. So we're in my hometown in Gouda Springs, Kansas, and it's, it's the home of hot rods. I mean, uh, everyone around here is into heavy horsepower, whether it be for uh, power boats or air boats or cars. So this manifold... Uh, it's got some cracks in it, uh, and it's probably just gone through abuse years and years and years of hot riding. So this uh, intake is made of a cast aluminum. Uh, now, we're going to keep the carburetors on here, and so the real concern is making sure that we don't have a fire. Well, so we're not going to do major preheating, even though because of the mass here, uh, the repairs that we have to make have to be a little bit warm. So we're going to show you some special techniques, and they're safe techniques. And the other thing is we're going to be using an air-cooled torch. Now this cable is only capable of 150 amps, uh, but for short durations it'll handle up to 200 amps. So that's all we're doing is short duration welds. Now it's never a good idea to weld aluminum cold. And when I say cold, it takes a while for it to heat up and then you can see it get liquid, then you can add filler. So what that does is it uses up the duty cycle of your torch and your cable and your machine. Well, in this particular case, we have a machine that's got plenty of amperage. We just haven't hooked it up water-cooled. So for our purposes, we're just going to do this air cool because this is really uh, the best portable way to do weld repairs. Now, what I've done is I've taken a, a, an infrared just to give you an idea of what the temperature is of this, this casting. And again, castings typically are pretty dirty, a lot of oxides on them. So... I. I shoot this on here and I see that it's uh, 68 degrees. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. I'm going to do a little pre-prepping. I want to get rid of the oxides, put a little channel in there so I can weld and get rid of the crack. Uh, but before I start welding, I'm going to preheat. I'm just going to use a heat gun. This is just plugs into 110 and I'm just going to hold it on there. In fact, you can walk away. Let this do your preheating. And it doesn't matter how much preheating, you just want to get the shock away from when you get ready to weld. So uh, I'm going to get my gear on, and we've identified a couple of spots. You're going to watch me grind them and prep them. Okay, so we, we've got the heater on here, and you know, I'm touching the, the carburetors, and they're still pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a temperature on them just to see what they are. They're about 80 degrees. So down here we're going to check and we're going to uh, shut this off. And it's important to start your weld fairly quick after you do this. But so I put the temperature on here and it says 130, 135, 140. So it's bouncing around a little bit and that's what you're going to get whenever you have aluminum. So it's the heat's changing just a little bit. It'll start dropping off because it's going to start saturating throughout the entire part. But this is what's amazing. Just by doing this little preheat right here, just a localized preheat, I can get by using this little air-cooled torch, 332 tungsten, pointed tungsten. I'm using laser at tungsten. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my gear on and get started. Before I start welding, I need to know what type of filler material you're going to use. Take a look at this. This is an old, old, old casting. It's got a lot of oxides on it. It's got a lot of cracks in it. Anytime you have something that's crack sensitive, that is the most important part of putting the right filler in. And this filler is 4043. It doesn't have quite the tensile strength or the properties of 5356, but it stops cracking. So that is the number one priority, and that's what we use. So let me get my gear on and uh, show you how to weld this.
Okay, now I started welding uh, the first weld here and it had a lot of oxides in it, but I got them to blend in and mix. Uh, oxides are insulators, so if you start welding on AC, I don't care what machine you're on, you're going to start getting interruptions because you're not getting a full cycle. It's trying to break through these oxides, but they're tenacious. I started on the second repair right here. It actually got pretty good material. I laid a base pass and then a second pass. Now I'm trying to fill in the top part where it was really exposed to, to oxides and water and things like that. There are so many oxides on there, I have to stop, get rid of them, and then I'll finish the weld. So that's all I'm doing right here is I'm going to, to grind into here, take these oxides out, give me some metal to work with. This, this is really pretty bad stuff. So. Uh, when you hear all the nasties going on, it's just not a smooth cycle going on. But it is taking, so it's going to have some strength to it, and we're going to put it back on the track for another day. So, okay, I'm going to get my gear on, and uh, I'm going to go ahead. It's already preheated. I'm just going to start welding. Okay, so I just want to recap this because uh, you're going to get involved in a lot of aluminum, and the aluminum oxide is just absolutely horrible. So you've got to try to get it off. The machine will take some of it off, but you may have to go in there and grind. If you get into cylinder heads, cylinder heads typically have the same problem. They've got oxides and oils and things like that. And when you start welding, your, your arc will just start bouncing around. So go ahead and make one weld, and if it looks ugly, go ahead and grind and get rid of the oxides, and it's amazing how it'll level out. Now, I did three different repairs on here. The, the first repair, the oxide was so thick, you could hear it. You could just hear everything, just trying to, to break through and create continuity. Uh, the second and third welds, they, they actually smoothed out pretty well. So <clears throat> all I did was, uh, again, I, I ground it out, got down to bare material, uh, used 4043 filler, uh, now you can change your machine according to what it is to how much cleaning action, but uh, you've got to get the oxide off. Uh, I probably use no more than 150 amps, that's what I set on the machine, and this is a 150 amp torch. So did it get warm? Yeah, I mean I could still hold it. And even though I was welding, you know, melting temperature is about 1200 degrees, I'm touching the carburetors here and uh, they never saw any open flame or, or any major heat. So uh, we're going to take this back to the uh, owner and uh, see if he can use it. So uh, I want to thank you for watching Take Time. I'm Mr. Tig.